beginning, life was blind. This is what our world looked like four billion years ago, before there were any eyes to see, until a few hundred million years passed. And then one day, there was a microscopic copying error in the DNA of a bacteria. This random mutation gave that microbe a protein molecule that absorbed sunlight. Want to know what the world looked like to a light-sensitive bacterium? Take a look at the right side of the screen. Mutations continue to occur at random, as they always do in any population of living things. Another mutation caused a dark bacterium to flee intense light. What is going on here? Night and day. Those bacteria that could tell light from dark had a decisive advantage over the ones that couldn't. Why? Because the daytime brought harsh ultraviolet light that damages DNA. The sensitive bacteria fled the intense light to safely exchange their DNA in the dark. They survived in greater numbers than the bacteria that stayed at the surface. Over time, those light-sensitive proteins became concentrated in a pigment spot on the more advanced one-celled organism. This made it possible to find the light, an overwhelming advantage for an organism that harvests sunlight to make food. Here's a flatworm's eye view of the world. This multi-celled organism evolved a dimple in the pigment spot. The bowl-shaped depression allowed the animal to distinguish light from shadow, to crudely make out objects in its vicinity, including those to eat and those that might eat it. A tremendous advantage. Later, things became a little clearer. The dimple deepened and evolved into a socket with a small opening. Over thousands of generations, natural selection was slowly sculpting the eye. The opening contracted to a pinhole covered by a protective transparent membrane. Only a little light could enter the tiny hole, but it was enough to paint a dim image on the sensitive inner surface of the eye. This sharpened the focus. A larger opening would have let in more light to make a brighter image, but one that was out of focus. This development launched the visual equivalent of an arms race. The competition needed to keep up to survive. But then, a splendid new feature of the eye evolved, a lens that provided both brightness and sharp focus. In the eyes of primitive fish, the transparent gel near the pinhole formed into a lens. At the same time, the pinhole enlarged to let in more and more light. Fish could now see in high depth, both close up and far away. And then, something terrible happened. Have you ever noticed that a straw in a glass of water looks bent at the surface of the water? That's because light bends when it goes from one medium to another, say, from water to air. Our eyes originally evolved to see in water. The watery fluid in those eyes neatly eliminated the distortion of that bending effect. But for land animals, the light carries images from dry air into their still watery eyes. That bends the light rays, causing all kinds of distortions. When our amphibious ancestors left the water for the land, their eyes, exquisitely evolved to see in water, were lousy for seeing in the air. Our vision has never been as good since. We like to think of our eyes as state of the art, but 375 million years later, we still can't see things right in front of our noses or discern fine details in near darkness the way fish can. When we left the water, why didn't nature just start over again and evolve us a new set of eyes that were optimal for seeing in the air? Nature doesn't work that way. Evolution reshapes existing structures over generations, adapting them with small changes. It can't just go back to the drawing board and start from scratch.